Hi, welcome back. I know there's many of you watching this video who are working jobs that you don't like. You dream of one day having enough money that you can quit your job and just enjoy the rest of your life. Well, in this video, I want to show you how I became financially free and how you can too. So in order to achieve financial independence, I had to do two things. So the first thing was find a way to make significant amounts of money in a relatively short period of time. Because there was no way I was going to keep working until retirement age, you know, 60, 70, and then enjoy my life. No, I wanted to be financially free and enjoy my life now. And for me, the, the way to achieve that was through investing, because I've always enjoyed investing. I started when I was a teenager, and it's just something that I really enjoy doing. Now, when you listen to all the financial gurus about how to invest to become financially free, they all say, oh, it's all about the compounding. And they say, you know, invest $100 per week into an index fund and over compounding. And then in 40 years, you'll be a millionaire, which is fine for those people who want to wait that long. But for me, that just didn't work. I needed something with a shorter time frame. So after doing lots of research um, and looking into things like day trading, um, dividend portfolios, I managed to come across a strategy that for me worked and that was swing trading. So that involves investing in stocks and shares and holding them for a few months up to a year or more. And I'm going to explain that a lot more a bit later in the video. And then the second thing I had to do in order to achieve financial independence was reduce my cost of living. If you want to reduce your expenditure, then usually what you do is you reduce your discretionary spend. You spend less going out to restaurants, you buy cheaper things in the supermarket, you take cheaper holidays or no holidays and things like that. But I didn't want to do that. I still wanted to have a life, um, but spend less. And so my solution was move country. And so I moved to Brazil. And here in Brazil, the cost of living is a lot lower. So I'm still able to do the things that I like to do, go to restaurants, uh, go on some holidays and stuff. But these things cost a lot less here. And so I'm still saving money. So having done these two things, so finding an investment strategy that worked and I was able to make some good money from it. And two, moving country to a country that's less expensive. I was able to become financially free and by the age of 35. So I don't have a job here in Brazil, so I can do the things that I enjoy, which is look after my investments, do a couple of YouTube videos, um, and just spend time with friends and family. And also, I don't just make enough money to support myself. It's also my wife and my daughter. Okay, so let me explain a bit more detail about my investment strategy and how I make money from it. So I do swing trading, which is different from day trading. So day trading usually involves investing in some stocks and shares or options and the investment period can be like a few seconds a few minutes uh, hours or maybe a couple of days but if you leave for a couple of days usually it means the trading is going against you and you're just hoping that it turns around but yeah day trading usually is very short term and there are people making good money with that so that's for sure and I, and I tried day trading, but it wasn't for me because, because one, I didn't like sitting in front of a computer screen every day. And also I found it quite intense because you enter a trade and then the, the broker shows you if you're making a profit or loss and the kind of the pressure builds when you're starting to make a loss. So it just didn't fit my personality. It wasn't for me. So I do swing trading, which is a lot more long term. So I buy stocks and shares and also commodities and I hold them for months or even longer. Uh, so this is a lot more relaxed. I only need to work a couple of hours a week. And so when I was doing this, I still had a job and it was perfectly fine. So I could do a normal nine to five job and do the swing trading on the side. And now that I no longer have a job, um, I'm still doing it. And there are days when I don't want to do anything is it's fine. It doesn't affect my strategy at all. So what is my swing trading strategy? Well, it's super simple. I mean, anyone can do this. You, you don't need a degree in finance and you don't need to understand options or all the complicated jargon or anything. So I, all I do is I buy certain stocks and shares when they've fallen by a certain percentage and then I just let them rebound and then I sell them. So I, I buy the dip. 
You're probably thinking, what a genius, this is revolutionary, no one in the, in the history of investing has ever done this. Obviously there is a bit more to it than that, but that is the simple strategy. It's just buy the dip in certain stocks and commodities. I've analyzed lots of companies in the States, in Europe, in Brazil. So I've got a list of about 200 companies, and if the share price of these companies falls by a certain percentage, then I invest in them. And these companies include like the, you know, the big ones that everyone's heard of, Amazon, Apple, uh, Microsoft, Nvidia. But it isn't just in the technology sectors, they've got other stocks like Costco, the, the supermarket, Berkshire Hathaway, so that's Warren Buffett's company, uh, Visa, the credit card company. So there's a whole mix of companies. But the key with these companies is that they've got a good business model, good profit margins, good free cash flow, so they generate a lot of cash, and they have good cash reserves as well. So they're strong, robust companies. If there's a fall in their share price, or if there's kind of a, just a general economic crisis, then it's highly probable that these companies can survive and their share price is gonna rebound. So then once I had my list of companies that I wanted to invest in, then came the difficult part, and that was waiting. So I had to wait for the share price of these companies to fall. And my criteria for how much the share price needed to fall was 30% from the all-time high. So once the share price had fallen by 30%, then I started investing in the share. And then if the share price fell more, then I added to my investment. And then once I invested in the shares, it's just a case of holding on to them until the share price starts rising again. And then I took some of the profits once the price reached all time high again. And then I took more profits as the price went even higher. So I would say that the most difficult part of this strategy is patience. Patience for waiting for an opportunity and then patience waiting for the share price to turn around and to take your profits. Um, so just to give you a few examples, so in 2022, two years ago, Meta, which is a company that owns Facebook and Instagram, um, the share price of Meta fell by 70% and that was due to various things. I mean, the stock market in general is going down a bit, but investors were particularly worried about Facebook because uh, subscriber numbers were going down, advertising was going down, and also it was investing lots in the metaverse and investors didn't like that. So because of those reasons, the share price fell. And so when it fell by 30%, I started investing. And then once I invested, I just left it, um, kind of checked it, and, and didn't check it every day or anything, checked it once a week. And then a, a couple of months later, it kind of, the price kind of stabilized and then it started going up. And then I took profits once it reached all time high again. And then as it went even higher, I took more profits. But I was never worried that Meta was going to go bankrupt or anything. It has a good business model, lots of cash reserves, generating lots of free cash flow. So I was never worried and I never felt that pressure of, oh, is this investment going to work or not? Because I knew that I'd done the research and I was confident with the, the company. Other examples are Netflix. A similar thing happened to Netflix in 2022. So again, the share price fell by over 70%. Uh, so again, invested in it and, and then took profits again once it hit all time high again and as it went even higher. And then finally it was Bitcoin. So Bitcoin fell from over $60,000 per Bitcoin down to $17,000, $18,000. So again, bought it when it fell 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, um, and then just waited for it to rebound, which it did. Now, I'm sure many of you are watching this going, great, that's a great strategy, but there are two issues with this. One, you need to start off with money in order to invest. If you, if you just have $1 in your savings, you're not going to become rich investing that $1. And that's true, you do need to start off with some money. And so how I did that was, I worked a normal job, a nine to five job, and did this strategy on the side. So I managed to save some of my salary from my job, and I used this money to invest. So I started with around $10,000, and when I started investing with this swing trading. And so I managed to turn this $10,000 into $25,000 within two years, 
$110,000 within four years, and then it just kept growing after that. So you can see I managed to start with you know, a fair bit of money, but it's not crazy amounts, $10,000. And also I managed to achieve financial independence over a relatively short period of time of six years, which is a lot shorter than working you know, for 40 years until you retired at the age of 60 or 70. Now there are a lot more details to my strategy than what I've gone through here. I've kind of just done it high level. So maybe I'll do another video kind of going through the details a bit more. But one thing I did want to mention is that this strategy is very simple, but it can be one of the most difficult and stressful strategies to implement. And I'll just give you an example here. So back in 2020, we had the pandemic and the share prices of a lot of companies fell significantly. So I started investing in the companies that were on my list, but everyone was telling me not to invest. So my parents, other family members, friends, all the experts on YouTube and on CNBC, and everyone was super negative saying, oh no, the share prices are gonna fall even more, the world, econ world economy is collapsing, blah, 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 blah. And I had to ignore all of that negativity and just stick to my plan. And that was super, super difficult. You just need to be aware of that, that when the opportunity arises, it's probably gonna be when you least want to invest because something big is happening with that company or the world economy as a whole. And then the other part to becoming financially free is moving to Brazil and that was also super difficult. Now obviously it doesn't need to be Brazil, it can be lots of other countries, it can be Malaysia, Thailand in Asia, it can be Costa Rica, Panama, um, I mean there's loads of countries to choose from which have a, a lower cost of living. So you just need to choose a, a country that you feel comfortable living in and obviously that you're able to get a visa for. And so by me moving to Brazil, I managed to cut my cost of living from nearly $5,000 per month down to $2,000 per month. And that's for me, my wife and my daughter. And so we bought a simple home here for $90,000. So we don't have uh, any mortgage or rental costs. And also other things like groceries, restaurants, uh, health insurance, all of those things as well are a lot cheaper here in Brazil. And it's also worth mentioning that I don't just get income from my swing trading. So a lot of the money I've generated from this, I've invested in shares that just pay a dividend. I also have a property that I rent out. And I also do some crypto airdrops as well, which now and again can pay some significant amounts of money. Um, so it's important to create other income streams as well. So you're not just reliant on one. And finally, with investing, nothing is 100% certain. So I felt it was highly probable that the investments that I did in these companies would turn around and generate a profit, but you can never be 100% sure. So you should never invest more than you can afford to lose. Don't ever remortgage your home or anything to invest in shares. So for me, I only invested the savings that I had and I knew that if everything went wrong, I would still be okay because I still had my job and I wasn't investing money that I desperately needed for other things. And also my way of becoming financially free is just one way of doing it. There's lots of other possibilities out there and there's lots of other YouTubers out there talking about other ways of achieving it. So I'm just sharing how I managed to do it. So I hope you like this video. Please leave a like, subscribe. If you've got any questions or anything, leave in the commentary below. So thanks for watching. Until next time.